Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is the name of our God. How excellent is the name of our King. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord most high, most high, most high. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord most high. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What an awesome, wonderful, glorious God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor, all praise, all glory to you, O King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our greatest praise to you, Lord, today. We bring, there is no God like you. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise to you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. We bless your name, we bless your name, we praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence, welcome into our day, welcome into our way. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that by your Holy Spirit, all of these people, all of your sons and daughters, your apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and, and evangelists, hallelujah, have been stirred, have been stirred stirred have been stirred to arise into your presence to arise hallelujah and receive wisdom that they might be wise that might, they might be your prized possessions going about doing good hallelujah you are awesome in this place almighty god you are worthy of all praise and to you our lives we raise you are awesome in this place almighty god we thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, that you have sanctified this fourth watch hour and you have made it an altar, an altar that your human sacrifices can be upon. Lord, our lives may be an, a sweet incense in your nostril. I thank you, Lord, for those who have sought to sacrifice early in the morning, hallelujah, under the green tree of this fourth watch hour to worship and adore you to magnify you to hear what you have to say like those O oh god who gathered around you on the mountain uh for the sermon of the mount those who gathered around you wherever you went and whatever you were doing so that they might hear that they might draw from you i thank you lord that in this generation we still gather around you to draw from you we still gather around you to press through and touch the hem of your garment we still gather around you lord jesus christ to receive wisdom and understanding counsel and might knowledge and the fear of the lord god almighty we still gather around you lord jesus that your spirit by your spirit your character and nature would manifest in us and impart to us that we might do what we see you do and say what we hear you say hallelujah in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and lord we thank you that you have already declared that greater works than what we have seen we will do i thank you lord that none of us will die before we have accomplished the greater works for which you have called us to do we ask O oh god almighty that we will walk in the fullness of your anointing and power in the fullness of your moral and ethical values in the fullness of your righteousness holiness and truth in the fullness of your grace and mercy and joy and peace in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth father as your people come on to these platforms i pray god that they will come into a kairos moment they will come into a moment of healing they will come into a moment of blessing they will come into an open door lord like a supermarket where the door opens but they don't have to pay for anything that they will come to just collect to just take the trolley of their lives and just walk through every aisle and just pick up and pick up and pick up and pick up i pray oh god that you will cause these your people hallelujah to just receive and receive and receive because there is no limit to what you have to give no limit to how you want us to live and so lord jesus christ of nazareth this day because your blood was shed at calvary that we might have life and life more abundantly we thank you this morning for abundant life for the husband and wife for the children for the family members hallelujah for all that is connected to us and all that will be connected to you through
to us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you today, precious Holy God of Israel, that we are blessed to be a blessing, that our households are blessed, that the atmosphere around us is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the new cars, for the new houses, for the new increase in bank accounts, for new jobs, for the new businesses. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that everything that we need for life and godliness has already been released. Thank you for the scholarships. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the A's that our children will receive. Thank you, Lord, for the change in attitude hallelujah and the altitude that our children will accomplish in the name of jesus thank you lord that our situation at work will change our situation in the company will change in the name of jesus christ of nazareth change for the better change according to jeremiah 29 11. i thank you lord that as we arise early in the morning hallelujah to seek your face that favor is our portion as we come into the holies of holies favor is our portion favor to prosper favor to advance favor to increase favor to enlarge favor to tear down and favor to build up favor to live and not die favor to be anointed sons that you can trust favor to walk in the spirit of wisdom and understanding counsel and might knowledge and the fear of the lord favor to live from the fruit of the spirit and favor to demonstrate the gifts of the spirit thank you lord for favor with spiritual things and favor with natural in natural things thank you lord for favor with you and man today and every day for the rest of our lives in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you for favor in our children being who you have ordained them to be in the name of jesus i thank you for favor with excellence in the minds of our children and brilliance thank you for favor as leaders for our children thank you that our firstborn shall be like the firstborn of the olden days jewish people they shall be the ones to inherit to flourish to prosper to increase and to be an example for those who will come after them thank you lord that none of our firstborns will be like esau who sold his birthright for a meal thank you lord god almighty that our firstborns will be a blessing to the kingdom a blessing to the nation a blessing to to their community and a blessing to their family in the name of jesus thank you lord that none of our children will fail satan's agenda will not prevail over our children in the mighty name of jesus christ none of our children will go to jail they will not be rightly or wrongly accused of any crime in the name of jesus christ thank you that our women will not choose men from the marine kingdom demonic spirits parading as men from the second heaven or from the demonic realm i thank you that our women oh god almighty will be patient like ruth was with naomi and they will commit to, to servanthood will commit to righteousness holiness and truth they will live hallelujah where you live go where you go serve you as a mighty god almighty and they will do what you have called them to do they will wait patiently upon you lord until you bring boaz in the mighty name of jesus christ our men will not go after sexual gratification but will go after the good thing and the favor that you have in store for them i thank you lord that those who are husbands already will begin to shift in this season i thank you for an impartation of the kingly anointing of the priestly anointing uh, god of the anointing for responsibility for taking responsibility for loving our wives unconditionally and giving ourselves for them as you gave yourself for that church in the mighty name of jesus christ i release into every household right now right now anointed men of god anointed men of god who are fathers husbands hallelujah leaders uh visionaries in the mighty name of jesus christ mighty men of valor priests and kings in the name of jesus christ i release into your household a fresh move of god's spirit upon the leaders upon the men in these households and where the household lack a man father we release a king and a priest a mighty man of valor a wonderful son of god into that household in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and i thank you lord god almighty that he shall meet hallelujah his ruth his esther in that house and they shall live 
and combined according to your will to chase 10,000 and 10,000 10 of 10,000 and 100,000 times 100,000 in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that fruitful seeds shall come forth out of the, out of the families that are being imparted to this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Fruitful seed in the natural and fruitful seeds in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that even this household, O God Almighty, we shall be pregnant with new anointing, new ministries, new, new, new glory. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare that even this weekend, God, <clears throat> God Almighty, a fresh flow of your gifting, a fresh flow of your blessing, a fresh flow of your love shall come forth from us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by just very presence, by laying on of hands, by impartation to word, will and presence and power. Glory shall fall afresh upon each and every one of your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, that every person hearing my voice right now that are sincere and that desire to walk in the fullness of your goodness shall flourish shall prosper shall be strengthened shall run and never be weary shall walk and never faint they shall run through troops and leap over walls i thank you lord that we shall not be sick and cannot move quick in the name of jesus the devil we cannot lick i thank you lord god almighty that you have given us like moses a rod and a stick hallelujah that we might do and be for your good pleasure in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak an impartation of your Shekinah glory upon each and every person that is hearing my voice now, that is called according to your purpose. I release the anointing for prosperity and good success. I release the anointing for righteousness, holiness, and truth. I release the anointing for war. I release the anointing for the armor of God to be utilized efficiently and effectively upon us in us and through us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release, hallelujah, the word of God in our mouths that we speak a thing, call forth a thing, declare a thing, decree a thing, and it is established by the spirit of the living God. It is carried out by the angels of the living God. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we speak not from just what we know as knowledge, but from the revelation, because we have the mind of Christ. Lord, as you gave so Paul, the mind of Christ. So I ask you this morning, download, 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 Holy God of Israel, download into every fourth watch family member, those that are on already and those that are to come later, those, oh God Almighty, who will watch delayed. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, download the mind of Christ anointing, download the mind of Christ anointing, download the mind of Christ anointing, for we need to think as you desire for us to think so that we might speak as you say we are to speak so that we might live out of what we think and say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, may our lives be a shifting uh, for the lives of others in the name of Jesus. May our demonstration and our manifestations be a blessing to those around us in the name of Jesus. May those far and near run to us, O God, for healing, for deliverance, for blessing, for favor, for encouragement, for edification and comfort in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, let your faithful sons and daughters, let your faithful sons and daughters, let your faithful sons and daughters arise this day. Arise and let our enemies scatter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We speak scattering, scattering to our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I forgot to share. Hallelujah. But remember, please remember to share. Remember to share. Remember to share. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings share and it's Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Remember to share. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to another day 
another time, another season in the presence of the living God. Welcome, Pastor David Johnson and the Johnson family, the Johnson clan, the Quiverful clan. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you on the on the various platforms. Uh, good morning to Natalie and my, 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 my godsons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. May get God children. Oh, I'm to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Hallelujah. And good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning to those of you on TikTok. Hallelujah. I hope that those who were on TikTok yesterday, guys, I have never seen TikTok explode like it did yesterday. The numbers were amazing, um, surprising but nothing surprises God. Amen. And I hope that those who were on yesterday were truly, truly blessed. I remember in times gone by when I saw 15 or, or even 18 on TikTok, it was a joy to my heart because I know more people than, than normal were being blessed. But yesterday, it was more than twice that. And I said, praise God from whom all blessings flow. What a good God. What a good God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So bless God, bless God. I want you to just take a, a, a minute or so to just declare some things in your atmosphere. I want you to practice to be the prophet over your own lives. Remember, you are the prophet over your own lives. And so you must prophesy, you must prophesy, prophesy, prophesy over your own lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophesy. Come on. Speak over your life. Speak over your family. Speak over that which concerns you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Speak over your health. Come on, Camille. I want you to prophesy. If you have strength, if you can speak, if you are able, the presence of God to seek, I want you for the next 60 seconds. Come on, just begin to speak over your family. My family is blessed. I am blessed. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am wise. I am a prize to, of God. Hallelujah. I am blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am, hallelujah, a created being of God. And I walk in favor. I am blessed to be a blessing wherever I go. My business my businesses will flourish and prosper and cause generational wealth to be in my household and in my bloodline in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I am blessed to be a mighty man of God, a mighty man of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare and decree that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that this is the time and the season when I will walk in the fullness of God's goodness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare and decree that favor is in my house in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Favor to my family, favor to my children, favor to my health, favor in everything that I say and everything that I do. I declare favor in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I am a carrier of favor. I am a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No weapon form against me shall prosper. No weapon form against my children, against my health, against my finances, against my prosperity, against my purpose shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. I shall accomplish what God Almighty has determined to be accomplished in me and through me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that this is the season where I will be who God has created me to be in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I walk in the fullness of power, love, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy what you want to see over your life. You have nothing to lose. Come on, Jamel, prophesy. Come on, what are you prophesying? Come Camille, I prophesy that you are healthy. I prophesy that it is well. I prophesy that no cancer shall take out any member of this family. I curse the spirit of cancer and I cancel it from off of this family member, these family members in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that we are blessed to be a blessing. We are, we are blessed to live and not die. No, no untimely death shall come to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
So Mark, hallelujah, Camille, uh, Franklin, I declare health, I declare restoration, I declare power, love, and a sound mind to each and every one of you. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that no future disease, no future sickness shall come nigh us. No sickness, no disease of poverty, lack and insufficiency. No sickness, no disease of hypertension, diabetes. No sickness, no disease of, of blood clots or tumors or cataract or glaucoma shall be our portion i reverse every curse that lucifer has released through food and medicines hallelujah backlash from medicines every back every every satanic impartation of things that are designed to take us out before our time i reverse and cancel that assignment in the name of jesus christ every demonic situation that has come unto us as a result of witchcraft as a result of ignorance associating with demonic sources and forces as a result of impartation from demonic and familiar spirits uh, in our dreams every spirit husband pregnancy every spirit wife transfer every familiar spirit encounter uh, intimately in our dreams I reverse that curse and cancel it every demonic assignment from our bloodline in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth come on hallelujah I, I, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, hallelujah. This, I'm not saying that God told me this, but I believe that uh, most of the time, most of the time, cancer is as a result of sexual intercourse with a demon in our sleep. I believe that they impart this disease into us in the same way that they say things we eat and things we consume over an extended period of time can lead to cancer. I believe that Satan has used cancer hallelujah as a is as a destroying agent that gets into the body due to due to encounters intimate encounters with demons in our dream and cause cancer i just thought of it just now uh but i believe that we are able to abort every satanic baby and said so this morning come on i want you to put your hand on your stomach and just declare any demonic baby that has been imparted into my body while i slept Hallelujah. I cancel their assignment. I abort them now in the name of Jesus Christ. I abort every fetus from Satan, every fetus from principalities and powers, every fetus that has entered my body as a seed designed to produce demonic fruit. I uproot in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I speak truth. My womb is for the blessings of the Lord. My womb, hallelujah, my, 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 my scrotum, my my intestines i am a carrier of righteousness holiness and truth i am a carrier of love power and a sound mind i am a carrier of all that god desires for me to carry in the name of jesus christ according to jeremiah 29 11 i cannot carry anything that is satanic or demonic because god who has all plans who has all righteousness holiness and truth has said that his plans for me are good and not evil to give me a hope and a future to prosper me that I might meet my expected end. Prospering is not dying by cancer. Prospering is not living in poverty, lack and insufficiency. Prospering is not fighting demons daily and never get a chance to live a good life. Prospering is not living in abstract debt. Prospering is going into all that God has for you. Yes, there will be seasons of war, seasons of battle, seasons of things that needs to, 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 to be um, controlled and taken dominion over. But we have not been born, hallelujah, to live in uh, in, in Satan's control. We have not been born to walk in the fullness of Satan's distractions and disruptions. We were born to flourish. We were born to prosper. We were born to live according to the will and purpose of God. And so we declare this day that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare and decree that we are more than conquerors. We are blessed to be a blessing come on we have to speak it until we believe it we have to speak it until we believe it and when we believe it and receive it we will flow and flourish we will glow and prosper we will be anointed sons that god can trust come on hallelujah
and so that's why each day i want you to take a few moments especially in this atmosphere of faith to just declare some things over your own life declare you shall not die poor you shall not die broke you shall not die under the generational curses that your parents and your grandparents died under i declare and decree that that which hallelujah took out your parents will not take you out that which you your parents lived in you will not live in you will live long and prosper you will live good you will live right you will live righteous you will live in the favor of God you will live in the blessing of God you will eat from the table that God has set before you in the presence of your enemies you will eat five course and ten course meals you will be able to travel the world to go places to do things according to the will and purpose of God you will be like Samuel a righteous man yet like Cyrus a rich man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you will be like David, a man after God's own heart, and like uh, and like Solomon, a man wiser than the, than than the wisest in the in the place. You will be like Ezekiel, one committed and dedicated to be in a demonstration of God's goodness in the earth. You will be like Hosea, humble and willing to do anything that God says, even if it makes us uncomfortable. We will be like Deborah, a mighty woman of God, ready to lead uh, nations and ready to judge, hallelujah, righteously in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Women, we will be like Esther in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, ready to say, if I perish, I perish, but I will go where God sent me. I will do what God has called me to do, hallelujah. And so I want us to realize that being like Esther, come on, can I preach a little bit? Being like Esther, ladies, hallelujah wives and future wives being like esther is not just going before a prime minister to declare some things it's not just going before a member of parliament to declare some things being like esther is going sometimes before the king that is in your house come on glory to god being like esther is being able to say if i perish i perish but i will submit to my authority i will submit to my husband i will submit to my boss i will submit no matter what but if I perish, I perish. Come on. Being like Esther, don't think that because Esther was a queen, everything that is on the scene is always going to be about going before the, the, the president of the company or the vice president. Sometimes being Esther is mean being Esther before your supervisor. Hallelujah. Being Esther before your supervisor, being Esther before your next door neighbor to say, hey, hallelujah, de-escalate. De and to set a standard that others can follow. And so we must understand that it's not always glim and glamour. It's not always the big things. Being Esther means being humble in every situation, being submissive in every situation that we might flourish and prosper in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Being Esther also means that what we do in the moment, in the time and in the season can have serious Im, um, implications, serious benefits to an entire nation, a community, or even a family in the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank God, hallelujah, for his peace, for his joy, for his blessing this day in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak favor upon you and upon your family, favor upon your children, favor, hallelujah, upon everything that concerns each and every one of you. I speak favor to those who are traveling today by boat, by air, by road. I speak favor. If you are traveling today, I declare favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor at TSA, favor at immigration, anywhere, any immigration that you are going through. I speak favor while you travel on land and favor while you travel in the air. I declare angels have been dispatched to be the pilot to what to in whatever uh, vehicle you're traveling in so pilot is a is driver of a car pilot is the one that flies the plane pilot is the one that steers the boat hallelujah i declare that your pilots shall be angels today in the name of jesus christ as you travel i declare that the holy spirit hallelujah shall set that th that whatever method you're traveling by 
or, or, or vehicle you're traveling in that the Holy Spirit shall set the atmosphere in that vehicle and that favor shall be your portion no incidents or accidents no harm or danger shall come to you as you travel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ if you're traveling even just to work and back I declare that you shall be safe no, no none shall meet shall hit into you and you shall not hit into any in the name of Jesus Christ I declare today the devil will not be able to see you his demons and devils and his human um, adversary and emissaries will not be able to see you you will go through uh, like Jesus went through the people who wanted to stone him and throw him off of a cliff and he just walked through them and they could not touch him did not see him I declare that today is a day when you will walk through the plans of the enemy that you will walk by all of your enemies and they will not see you those who hallelujah have stones to stone you will put them down knowing that they cannot hit you they cannot touch you they cannot speak against you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare that you are blessed come on hallelujah when you go to work today do not go thinking oh my god I have to deal with these voices I have to deal with these people with stones ready to stone me go to work today knowing that right now right at this moment you are receiving an impartation to live as Christ lived walking through your enemies and they not see you impacting your enemies rather than your enemies impacting you come on I impact my enemies my enemies do not impact me I impact demons and devils demons and devils do not impact me come on hallelujah Come on, Jackie. Come on, Francine. Hallelujah. Come on, Yvonne. Speak it. I impact my atmosphere. My atmosphere does not impact me. I am a glory carrier. Come on, people of God. Declare it. Richard, declare it. I am a glory carrier. I run things. Things don't run me. I run my house. My house does not run me. And I don't run around my house. Come on, declare it. I run things. Hallelujah. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. Notice that Jesus didn't own much when he was on the earth because he didn't come, um, come to own anything. But yet he was the leader. He was the teacher. He was the owner. He commanded every atmosphere. He fed those when he did uh, Yet he, he wasn't rich. He didn't have money. He didn't have food. He didn't have shelter uh, uh, too much. But yet he dominated. When someone needed somewhere to stay, Jesus led them to a house where he was staying when someone needed money to pay taxes Jesus got money for them from the mouth of the fish when someone needed food thousands of people needed food Jesus caused food to come for them is somebody hearing me this morning if we are living out of the confidence out of the will out of the purpose out of the character and nature of Jesus we become the the, 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 the author and finisher of what stimulates other people's faith. We become the source through which they know Jesus. We become the source through which they are fed and clothed, come on, and encouraged and edified and comforted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants us to live like him. And when we look at how he lived, come on, hallelujah. He didn't desire a 35,000 square foot mansion, but when it was time for somewhere to live, and for others to be able to come there and rest there there was a place come on he didn't walk around with a supermarket but when it came time for people to eat he had food available in excess that they had some left over I'm saying to you this morning people of God you got to declare you are a leader you have to declare you're a problem solver I am a leader extraordinaire I am a leader like Jesus I am a leader that others wants to follow and others want to learn from I am a problem solver nations will contact me to solve problems government officials leaders of industry leaders of churches will contact me to solve problems people will come wanting to solve problems problems of health problems of emotional issues problems of the of the demonic realm problems of the natural I am a problem solver by the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit I impact atmosphere I change circumstances I am a counselor I am one full of wisdom full of knowledge full of understanding full of power love and self-control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ come on people of God it is what you say that you shall have the 
the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue and those that speak it shall eat the fruit of it let's eat the fruit of good things this morning prophesy to yourself my business my businesses will expand and enlarge I declare I have businesses in every parish in Jamaica businesses overseas in the name of Jesus Christ I declare successful businesses I declare that you have successful businesses I declare that the Christian community the kingdom community will be will begin to inter intercommunicate intercommerce we shall begin to trade and and, and 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 buy and sell to each other in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that every business that is within the kingdom and for kingdom citizens kingdom citizens will support each other's business and we will grow and flourish and develop a kingdom economy that will will be overflow of blessing and favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare this morning each and every one of you that are hearing me now now, according to the will and purpose of the Most High God, you are blessed to flourish, blessed to prosper, blessed to increase, blessed to be anointed sons that Jesus Christ of Nazareth can trust. As you speak it, as you declare it, as you embrace it, so it shall be. For the word of God that cannot lie says that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Come on. So if you have a business this morning or you have a business in your mind, you have a business that you want to start or a business that has been held up in paperwork hallelujah you have registered it but you have not gotten back the documents yet anywhere or any stage that your business is at i speak to it now and i command it to rise up i command it to come up i command it to to start up i command it to flourish i command it to increase i command your business to be a provider and not a draw a, a sucker of of uh of resources in the name of Jesus I declare that your employees shall be honest filled, filled with integrity hard-working shape shall buy into your vision and shall cause your company to succeed to expand and enlarge I declare that angels shall be in your business working every single day until the Lord comes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare hallelujah that good success and prosperity is the portion of your business now in the name of Jesus I declare that generational wealth shall be a uh, manifested in you and through you for your generation in the name of Jesus every curse that has come down through the generational lines poverty lack insufficiency sickness brokenness ah, rejection anything that has come down the generational lines that has stopped you and your current generation from prospering I sever it with the sword of the spirit I cut off those umbilical cords and I release you today into experiencing and embracing that which you have declared over your own life and family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah 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 come on glory to God glory to God we have lived a life of um, of dependency on others come on fourth watch family members hear me carefully we have lived a life of dependency on others when we need prayer we rush to call either the prayer warrior our prayer partner our spiritual advisor or our pastors hallelujah I'm saying to you don't stop calling those people but they must they must not be your first port of call we always need people let me just set the record straight we always need each other Jesus needed Peter James and John and then the other disciples as well at different points in time amen hallelujah so we always need people Paul needed Silas and Barnabas and Timothy and all the other persons that he sparred with on, a, on different occasions to accomplish different goals. Jesus, when he was sending out the 72 to go pray and to set this, the tone in the various towns where he was going to minister, he sent them out two by two. We always need people. So let me just set that record straight, lest it is misunderstood. But guess what? We need Jesus first. We need the Holy Spirit first. We need God Almighty first and foremost we must be in the presence of God he must download to us he must be the one not to tell us that we need someone because he has already said that but he will show us who we need come on hallelujah 
Hallelujah. So God is not going to tell us that we need someone because he, we, he has already said that. Duh. We know that we need someone. A man needs a wife in order to obtain favor. Come on. A woman needs a man to learn how to submit and to honor and to speak good and to be a helpmeet. Amen. And a man needs a woman to learn how to love. Glory to God. There are things that God has created us to, 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 to need each other to flourish. One shall chase a thousand, but because demons and devils are in their hundreds of millions, God says, if I send you alone, you will only be impacting a thousand. You'll only cast out, come on, you'll only cut off, you'll only kill one Goliath. One Goliath represents one thousand, but God says, I have an entire Philistine army of demons, an entire Amalekite, Hittite, Jebusite army of demons and devils parasites hey god almighty philistines yes even philistines ah pharisees and sadducees spirits that are operating in the church and around the church and in the community various demons and devils they are in their hundreds of millions and so you alone hallelujah can only impact a thousand and so you need someone else that when you come together tens of thousands are destroyed daily and so we do not we were not created to be alone and so those of you who are single this morning if you realize that god wants to pair you with a partner pair you with someone who you need to who needs to love you if you're a woman and who you need to honor and respect if you are a woman hallelujah if um if you're a man then understand clearly that you are not coming together just for your personal satisfaction or for your personal goals to be achieved first and foremost you're coming together to achieve the purposes of god hallelujah every marriage is supposed to be for the achievement of the purposes of god hallelujah hallelujah amen and so everything that we do everything that we do sister jackie sister donna sister craig, uh, craig yes brenda everything that we do each day is supposed to be for the glory of the lord jesus christ so when you go to work when you go to work sister jackie i'm picking on you because you have said that they're picking on you at work things are a little difficult and stuff so here what happened when you go to work if you remember mighty woman of god and all of you on other platforms that are hearing me, when you go to work, when you go to, to, to wherever you go, to your children's sporting facilities, when everywhere that you go, you must be confident. You must walk into that atmosphere confident that the glory of God goes with you and that everyone that encounters you will encounter the glory of God, the presence of God. Your, your task, your impact in that atmosphere must be a problem solver. Come on. Must be an atmosphere shifter. Must be a reconciler. You must draw men unto God in every situation and circumstance that you and I are in. Hallelujah. So as a pastor goes to church every day or every Sunday or Saturday with an intent to preach persons into the kingdom, with an intent to teach, to edify, to exhort, to comfort, to bring, hallelujah, maturity to the body, each and every one of us as individuals going into the various environments that we go into, hear me carefully, hallelujah. Our job is to impact that environment as a pastor's job is to impact the congregation on a Sunday or Saturday or whenever church is held. Are you hearing me? That's our responsibility. When we begin to see it like that, we stop seeing ourselves as victims as we are persecuted in the atmosphere and environments that we go into and we see ourselves as Jesus. Jesus was constantly persecuted paul and the, the apostles of old were constantly persecuted in the environments that they went into but they were never uh, sh they were shaken but not stirred come on glory to god they were they were oppressed but not destroyed come on hallelujah and so no matter what happens to you you are victorious you will be victorious you are more than a conqueror in that environment stop crying stop crying stop complaining stop saying i want i have written my resignation and it's just a matter of 
pressing send you cannot send your resignation you cannot send your resignation in any situation unless you have impacted that situation to the glory of God amen and so God always drops us into situations to fix it God allowed Paul and Silas to be in the dungeon so that the jailer and his family could be saved but it didn't look like that. It looked difficult. It looked like God forsake them. It looked like God was punishing them. It looked like if we look through the lens of our experience or our situation or our circumstances, we will miss God. Can I say that again? People of God, hear me carefully. If we look through the lens of our situation or circumstance or environment, we may just miss God. If Paul and Silas was like me, who in a, in, in, in a moment, hallelujah, was looking at the darkness, was looking that I was out preaching the gospel, I was doing God's work, therefore the angels should have been protecting me, therefore the, 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 the might and power of the Holy Ghost should have protected me, should I, uh, and then I'm hearing voices in my head, I'm hearing some of my Christian brothers and sisters saying, yes man, sin must be in your life, why they were able to do that to you, you are not discerning enough, you should have discerned that these spirits were coming after you, and so you're getting bombarded by the physical beating that you're taking from the atmosphere from the situations and circumstances and you're also being bombarded spiritually by those who are speaking against you telling you like the job's friends told him you think you're righteous but look at this look at how you're being wrongly persecuted look at how you're gonna be put in jail what is wrong you think you're so spiritual because you're demonstrating power but know that it is not something is in your life you're not as good as you think you you are and they begin to persecute you rather than pray for you the children of Israel hallelujah the Christians they didn't say look at Peter he disobeyed the order of the of the king and now he's in jail let him stay they prayed earnestly night and day prayed they prayed they prayed they prayed until God delivered sometimes God is working on the person that is in the prison come on glory to God and sometimes God is working on those who are around the prison outside the prison and so God was teaching the children that the, 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 the saints at that time how to travail to produce a result ah oh, Jesus come on somebody hallelujah God was teaching Paul and Silas uh, how to worship in the midst of a bad situation uh, that they will not only be freed by the earthquake uh, but they will free the jailer and his family from the, 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 the prison of sin that they were in hallelujah and so God's glory for us is always greater than our glory for ourselves God's desire to see us flourish and prosper is always greater but we curtail ourselves we arrest ourselves we find ourselves in bad situations because we allow the circumstance the moment in time to affect our, our, our thought process we get annoyed frustrated hallelujah we become we become uh, uh, angry cross miserable in a moment in time when really what we should be doing is saying lord i thank you for this opportunity to learn from this situation i thank you for the opportunity oh god to defeat this situation and to win souls to demonstrate faith to grow in faith to become a mighty warrior for you in the name of jesus christ is that easy of course it isn't it's very very difficult let me just say that again. It's very, very, very difficult. But I'm telling you, those who move to the next level, those who ascend and descend heaven, those who walk in uncommon power, those who walk in the glory of the Lord are those who learn how to give thanks in every situation. Can I preach to somebody this morning? Those who learn how to be at peace when all the storms are coming. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. What we see in the scripture, Jesus said, that which you see me do, you will do an even greater works. We saw him in the storm sleeping. Come on. We saw when he woke up that he said, peace be still. There's a peace be still in all of us because Jesus, who is the peace be still, lives in us. Hallelujah. My wife practices every single time we go on the road and come back. As she walks through the door, any storm that's going on, whether she see it or not, she speaks to that storm, peace be still. I used to wonder, why does she say, peace be still? 
as she comes in and then now just at this moment i am getting the revelation on it sometimes there's a storm in your house sometimes there's a storm in your workplace sometimes there's a storm in your family sometimes there's a storm in your nation sometimes there's a storm in your community and you don't know you don't see it you don't sense it yet you haven't discerned it but if you continually declare and you continually develop an attitude of speaking to even that which you have not yet seen and command that peace of God to be over your atmosphere to be over your children to be over your marriage before the argument starts before the disagreements come before the enemy enters your situation and circumstance at work before the enemy began to begin to tear down your children at school before the bullies start to bully your son or your daughter you got to speak peace be still you got to say peace be still at school peace be still at my job before I even get there peace be still in my company and with my staff peace be still come on hallelujah on the roads today because there are storms people of God that you have not yet seen there are storms people of God that you have not yet encountered but you have the power to go into the realm of the spirit and calm the storm before it hurt Tom amen praise God this is exciting stuff man we God is teaching us how to live in the now in the past and in the future he's teaching us how to take dominion over every single thing that happens he said pastor how can I take dominion over the past the past is already gone yes there are some things in the past that has come to destroy our present and even our future generational curses can only be uprooted by going in the past come on hallelujah rejection unforgiveness come on since you want me to teach i'm gonna teach this morning in the glory of the lord jesus christ uh, rejection abuse uh, uh, adultery come on fornication abortion all forms of sexual immorality has its roots its genesis its beginning in the past and so in order to truly be free we have to go back into the past in the spirit speak peace be still so we curtail it so we bind it come on and then we uproot it uproot it from the root so generational curses unforgiveness we have to go back to what was done to the person we have to highlight that this person may have done this already but it cannot continue to haunt you today your past cannot continue to haunt you today and so if there's anyone here hearing me this morning I want you to speak truth to your past speak truth to your past you are alive today because God kept you and you are here today because of his grace you are alive today because God has a purpose for you a purpose that Satan was trying to use your past to derail delay or deny but today we declare that we have the authority to speak peace be still to our past peace be still to our now and peace be still to our future I speak to every storm in your past every storm in your now every storm in your future and I say peace be still by the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah I speak peace be still to every systems attacking the mind of your children causing them to be worried and fearful hallelujah yesterday us as men were in a room meeting at church in a space and as we were there just going about our normal business enjoying ourselves out of nowhere a storm called an earthquake came and it shook the building and we know that these men were properly saved because none of them hallelujah jumped and ran for the door ah, I don't know if they thought about it but they were confident in who God is confident that the building of our lives the building that we are in can be shaken but it cannot be destroyed can somebody say hallelujah this morning the building of our lives can be shaken but no says God that though the disciples were in a boat Jesus who is the one that calms every storm was sleeping though they were in a boat and a storm came Jesus who is the calmer of the storm was walking towards them he is never far when there is an earthquake he is never far when there is a hurricane he is never far when there are 
have problems in your life. He's never far when your marriage is looking like it's gonna fall. He's never far because he was never far for the, 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 the disciples and apostles and he's not far from us now. I'm here to tell you he's he's in the operating theater when you're about to do surgery. He's in that delivery room when you're about to have a baby. He is never far and all he's there to do is say peace be still. And so I release the peace of God upon every fourth watch family member this morning. Peace in your situation that you are facing. Peace in your circumstance. Hallelujah. Peace to your financial situation. Peace to everything that you are encountering. I declare peace of God. I speak from the spirit of a living God. I speak by the authority of the name of Yeshua the Mashiach of Nazareth. That authority that he says he has given to us. I speak from that authority. He will not call me a, a, a faithless and perverse generation. He will not say how long shall I give you my word. How long shall I speak into your life. I will speak until I see change. I will declare until my change come I will call forth that which is not until it comes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth so I speak a peace be still into every situation and circumstance that is prevailing in your house right now every fear every anxiety every 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 uh, every inconsistency every failure everything that is causing uncommon demonic manifestations in your house every storm I speak peace be still every storm in your office peace be still now every storm in your community gang violence war drug dealings all manner of evil taking place in your community causing fear I speak peace be still to it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth poverty a spirit of poverty lack witchcraft any form of evil in your community or in your family or in your household I speak peace be still to those situations now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I declare that you are blessed and highly favored you are strong and mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds you will live and not die you will prosper and not hallelujah be in poor poorness you will be healthy and not sick in the name of Jesus Christ I speak to every sinew and tissue right now in your body and I command every organ every nervous system every joint and marrow to be healed in the name of Jesus every storm in your body your physical body I speak peace be still right now every past present and future illness infirmity that wants to come upon your body or has come upon your body or is coming upon your body now I speak peace be still I take authority over that storm and I destroy it I command calm and I command winglessness concerning evil in your life in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Jesus what a mighty God we serve come on give God a praise he has shifted the atmosphere in us around us and through us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ guys we have to practice daily practice to speak the good things into your day practice declare if you work on the road if you work far away from where your house is anything that's happening you have to declare set the stage set the road not even policeman must see you when you're driving by hallelujah so if you're going two miles per hour unfortunately over the speed limit hallelujah you must drive at the speed limit but if you accidentally go over the speed limit the police will not see you as the people who come to beat up Jesus didn't see him as he moves through but remember drive at the speed limit amen praise God I'm just saying to you that as God's children we have favor when we make mistakes we have favor when we even do things that we shouldn't have done we still have favor in the name of Jesus Christ we shouldn't do things that goes against the will and purpose of God do not make it a habit uh, our habit must be righteousness holiness and truth but when we do as a, in our humanity make a mistake know that God is with us remember he was in the boat when the storm and the guys were, were freaking out Jesus don't you care that we perish he woke up and he was like what's going on man can't you guys see me if I'm here that means you cannot die Come on, I need to say this to someone this morning. 
If Jesus is with you, you cannot die. If Jesus is with you, you cannot be broken. If Jesus is with you, you cannot fail. If Jesus is with you, cancer cannot prevail. If Jesus is with you, hypertension, diabetes cannot prevail over you. You will not get a stroke. Come on. Because God has already spoken. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke. Therefore, you will not get a stroke. Amen. And so we have to believe this. Come on. Hallelujah. You are the one, the dominant one in your workspace. Satan and his emissaries cannot dominate you in your workspace. Pontius Pilate and Herod did not dominate Jesus. The Pharisees that took him before the courts, they did not dominate him. The only reason it looked like they won was because, was because the greater victory, the greater victory was to come from his resurrection. Now, if they were able to stop his resurrection, then they would have won. But killing him was not a victory. Killing Jesus was not a victory for the Pharisees. It was not. If they were able to seal his tomb and prevent his resurrection, that would have been a victory. Because dying on the cross just took all of the evil, <clears throat> all of the wickedness, everything that was corrupt and stink that's what he kept on the cross but when he rose again he rose as the rose of Sharon with an incense with a perfume that cannot be mimicked by any perfume maker in the world he rose with a glow and a glory he rose that we might have life and life more abundantly so he died to take us from the place where we once were and rose to take us to the place where we should be oh glory to god mm. Woo! if that didn't touch you in your spirit you're not alive or you're not saved hallelujah Glory to God. And so, yes, he had to die. And we're not belittling his death on the cross. We're not belittling his sacrifice. We're not belittling that he was whipped and beaten to within inches of his life before they, they, they actually took the life. We're not belittling that. That's of great significance and value. Hallelujah. And we thank God for it. We thank God that he was able to withstand the punishment to his physical body and to his emotional life for us just for me just for me jesus came and did it just for me you know that song just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me. What did he do? Everything. He took the whipping. He taught for the thirty year for the third um for the thirty years. Yes, he taught even from he was a boy. He was teaching from he was born. He was teaching in the manger. He was teaching. Come on, he was teaching how to persevere, how to listen to God. His family learned from him how to listen to God that they could move. Come on, I'm giving you revelation as I'm getting it now. As I'm getting it now. So Jesus was teaching from the moment he died, from the moment he was born to the moment he resurrected. Look at the life of Christ and you'll realize that there are many things that have not, we may not have preached, we may not have taught, but it is valuable and significant. So Jesus, when he came as a baby, he was teaching, first of all, while he was in the womb of Mary, he was teaching Joseph how to be uh, submissive to God. He was teaching Joseph how not to respond to his own likes and dislikes. He was saying, Joseph, listen to me carefully. You're making a sacrifice as a man to teach some Jamaican men that they must not respond when they hear that their wife is pregnant or <laughs> and it's not for them they must first seek God so he was teaching us in that pregnancy how to listen to God and obey God when he speaks because a Jamaican man would have been like what you're pregnant and we have not had any kind of contact uh-uh not happening come on he was teaching he was teaching us 
even while he was in the womb, that if he comes into your presence, even when he's not visible, or oh, somebody got to get excited this morning, even when he's not visible, he can still impart his anointing. When, when Mary, oh, I feel the presence of God. I'm covered in goosebumps. Guys, this is great stuff. When Mary went to visit Elizabeth, come on, John was in the womb already, and John needed anointing. John needed power, and Jesus, while he was in the womb, imparted power somebody gotta get excited i'm telling you from the moment jesus was born in a in the before he was born he was teaching us how to labor it doesn't matter if we're seeing him it doesn't matter if we know what he's doing or what he's not doing as long as he's in our presence impartation is taking place and so God imparted to Joseph the need for submission the need for understanding the need hallelujah for obedience to God he then imparted from the womb hallelujah the anointing to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ from the womb of Mary to the womb of Elizabeth. The baptism of the Holy Ghost was given to someone who was not even born yet. Oh, Jesus. So God is saying, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything impossible for me? If I can minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire to one that is still in the womb, what can I do? Can I not lift you out of the tomb? Can I not make you a bride or a bridegroom? Hallelujah. Come on. And so if you look at the life of Christ through the lens of power, through the lens of anointing, through the lens of grace, you will see that even before the gift of the birth of the um, birthing of Jesus Christ in the earth, there were teachings going on that were designed to make us better. Amen. So Joseph could have responded out of his flesh, but God showed him that, listen, if I am calling you to a purpose, I will speak to you, I will fix you, I will direct you, I will cover you, I will guard and keep you. And so if you're about to take on a project, if you're about to go to a job interview, if you're about to do something, start a business, whatever, and you have not been instructed by God, chances are you may be in trouble. Chances are you may be in trouble. Because God, before you were formed in your mother's womb, was talking and is still talking today, trying to get us to do the right thing and go the right way. Amen? Hallelujah. So right up until his death on the cross, burial in the tomb, and resurrection, Jesus has been talking and demonstrating how we should live. Amen? Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. 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 One powerful thing that happened when Jesus was round about two years old. Hallelujah. Round about two years old. If, 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 if you follow the scripture line upon line, precept upon precept, um, the wise men came and brought treasures to him. Treasures to him. If you are born of God, hear this, hear this. This is revelation, guys. If you are born of God, the moment you begin to grow in God, treasures will find you. Mm, Jesus. Woo! Who's bringing an offering for that one? The moment you begin to take God seriously, begin to grow in God, at about two years old, the, 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 the wise men from the east found him. Amen? Hallelujah. The wise men from the east found him and blessed him, brought gifts for him. But at the same time, when you are getting gifts as you begin to mature in God, as you begin to grow, come on, guess what? Herod is going to send soldiers to try to kill you. In other words, Satan is going to send his demons and devils and his emissaries, his human emissaries, are going to come to try and distract you, are going to come to try and kill your purpose, are going to come to try and stop, delay, derail, or deny you from accomplishing what God wants you to accomplish. But one thing you must be encouraged by, if they couldn't stop Jesus, they can't stop you. Because the Jesus they couldn't stop lives where? In you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so there's no need to become depressed 
people of God. There's no need to be anxious. There's no need to be fearful. You just got to believe that the God who they couldn't stop, the Jesus who they couldn't defeat, the a hey, glory to God, the Jesus, even when they put him on the cross, they still couldn't stop him. That Jesus lives in us by the Spirit. And if they couldn't stop him then, they certainly can't stop him now. You know why? Because as he ascended into heaven, the Bible says he was given a name, a name that is above every name, that at the sound of the name of Yeshua the Mashiach of Nazareth, every knee must bow and every tongue confess that he alone is Lord. He is Lord all by himself. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Savior. And so, in his power and position and authority, he is defender of all his children, all who he died on the cross to bring into his family. He's our defender. So if you think, as man, he defended the disciples in the boat. If you think, as a man, he defended the disciples when he walked on the water in the fourth watch hour. Imagine him now in his splendor. In his glory. Oh, hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. How excellent is your name, Lord Jesus. How excellent is your name, Lord Jesus. We honor you this day, Lord. This Fourth Watch family honors you. We thank you that you rose from the dead. We thank you that you have been given autonomy. You have been given supremacy. Hallelujah. We thank you that your name is powerful, that your name gives us access and entrance. Your name gives us covering and shield. Your name gives us power. Hallelujah. Over all the power of the enemy, your name gives us authority. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all that you have given us through your name. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare that we are more than conquerors, strong and mighty through God to victory in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Guys, all we have to do is believe. All we have to do is believe. It's easy to cry when we're in a boat that water is coming in. Easy to cry when things are not going the way that we want it to. Easy to cry when our marriage looks like it's about to break up. When our children look like they're not prospering the way that we want them to prosper. At this age, they should have been at a higher level in school. They should be in high school already. They should be in a grade higher than where they are. They should be doing better in reading and math arithmetic or mathematics, as, as some call it. They should be doing better in their mental ability. They should be doing better as a child of God. They should already be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Everything, every marker that our family, our children, our marriage, our own lives have missed. Understand that God is not panicking. He's asleep in the situation that we call a storm. Come on, somebody. You got to recognize that God is not panicking because he's the boss of all bosses. He is in control of time and time bows to him. Time reports to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. So let us just get excited about the fact that no matter what situation, your children are not doing what they're supposed to. Come on, your son is not behaving the way he's supposed to. Just know that God is in the boat. God is in the midst of that storm. And at the moment that he chooses, at the moment that, bring, that will bring the grandest testimony, at the moment that, that will draw men unto him, at the moment that will bring a, 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 a shame to the devil, he will just say, boom, and Altair, your son will be restored. He will just go, boom, and Camille, your body will be restored. He will just go, boom, and Franklin, you will be you are able to run and not be weary and walk and not faint. What is it that you are believing God for a boom? Hey, <laughs> Jesus, because when Jesus drops his boom, storms calm. Hallelujah. You come to no harm. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. And so, let us practice. Let us practice. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy, Althea. It's not easy. But we must practice. We have no choice. We have to practice to believe God. It took the disciples a while. Come on. Let's be real. 
because we're preaching truth, but truth must line up with reality. Amen? Truth never changes because of reality, but reality, truth is, 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 is necessary for reality to become real. Reality is not reality unless truth makes it reality. And so there is an existence that we call reality, but it is not a reality until the truth of God impacts it. Somebody should write that down. Mm -hmm. Reality is our existence to us, but reality to God is when the truth of his word impacts the reality of our existence. So reality is not what is not our experience. Reality is the manifestation of God's truth. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. And so Sister Jackie, Sister Althea, Sister Jewel, hear me carefully. Sister Denise, hear me carefully. The reality, reality of God's what? truth. Huh? Reality, is reality to us is a representation of our environment. The things that are happening to us. Reality for God is the manifestation of his truth. So when God's truth come to pass, that's reality. So no matter what you are living, no matter what you are seeing, no matter what you are hearing, no matter what's going on around you, that is not reality unless it is a reflection of God's truth. It is an existence it is a circumstance, it is a situation, but it is not reality. Amen. Because that which is real can only be created by God. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan can try to contaminate what is real. He can try to dominate what is real. But I'm here to tell you that that which is real is that which is impacted and shaped by God's mm. truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so our lives, our situations, our circumstances, we must declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my reality mm -hmm. must be as a result of God's mm -hmm. truth concerning me. God's and God's mm -hmm. truth is what? I am more than a conqueror. I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Come on. I am full of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, the fear of the Lord. I am strong and mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. I fight against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness in high places fear me because I am a mighty warrior. Come on. Those are God's truths. Now those truths of God and many, many more must become our reality. And when they become our reality is when we begin to speak them and they affect our atmosphere. Woo! Hallelujah. This is deep stuff. This is deep stuff. So what we thought before this morning was our reality, how people treat us at work, how people um, steal from us, scam, uh, crime, violence, all these things. Those are not reality. Those are circumstances, mirage. And God's hands are folded, waiting on us to speak a peace be still over these situations so that they can truly reflect his reality by his truth. So when we speak God's truth, God's truth produce a different reality. Come on, somebody. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, walk to the altar and put an offering for that. That's powerful stuff. Glory to God. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to I'm I'm going to leave the revelation for this morning. <laughs> Sister Tessa, Sister Tessa say, "Wow. Praise God. That's the kind of God we serve, Sister Tess. He is awesome and amazing. Every day he's looking to teach us more and more and bring us to a higher place of revelation, a higher place of manifestation." You guys have no idea how it feels sometimes to just hear the Holy Spirit take over my vessel and speaking things that I have never heard before. And I'm like, whoa, praise God. Hallelujah. It's so exciting, man. It feels good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we give God thanks. Father, we thank you this morning for all that you have done. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your blessing and favor. Thank you. 
that you have revealed to us things that will heal, deliver, set free, and make whole. Thank you that your word brings truth and your truth changes the reality that Satan wants us to accept to the reality of your blessing and your favor. Uh, who we are as sons is your reality in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we get in a verse like we did yesterday? Come on. Glory to God. We have to always take a, a, a verse of scripture even though we live only by scripture we constantly reference scripture hallelujah but we want to to get into a literal verse in the passage that we have been studying hallelujah i know some of you are saying pastor don't stop yet man i'm on a high i'm on a high i'm really um soaking up this truth this reality change that is taking place hallelujah but it will not change come on glory to god I thank God for, 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 for each and every one of you that supports this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so guys, um, grab your Bibles. We're in 1 John. We're still in 1 John. Yesterday, we stopped at verse 10, I think it is. Yeah, we did, we did verse 9 yesterday, and we stopped at verse 10. That's okay. That's true. Oh, God, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, hallelujah, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, and we're at verse 10. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for thou art our strength and our redeemer. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let your revelation come forth from your word and let it find fertile soil in your people that we might grow and bear fruit according to your will and your truth in Jesus name. Amen. So verse 10 of 1st John chapter 3 says, this is how we know who the children of God are. How do we know? No one who is born of God, that's verse 9. Come on, I'm slingshotting or or catapulting into verse 10. So I want us to recognize what God is saying adamantly remember yesterday if you were paying attention you notice i was saying that our culture our culture of of, of, of being laid back our culture of being uh, music oriented our culture of saying everything i remain uh, our culture of, of of certain types of behavior and attitude does not change the word of god the the, the american culture of 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 glitz and glamour and niceness and, and and wanting to do what seems what seems right to each man because of the independence the home of the free the land of the brave the home of the free the land of the free the land, the land of the free and the home of the brave yes hallelujah you're free to do anything you want uh, and that's and that's true in the natural sense but when you come into kingdom hear me americans when you come into kingdom you're not free anymore you're not free anymore we are free to do, but we're not free to live. Though I have freedom, I am responsible for that freedom. So you're really not free. You're held to a standard. But often, men and women of God that have a responsibility to teach the new generation, and it's not just America. I may use America as an example, but it's not just America. It's all over the entire world, wherever Christians live, in free democratic societies. We all seem to behave, for the most, for the most part, the same way. We use our freedom to our destruction. We're not free to go where we want, to just go to parties and to drink and behave like we're still in the world. You're not. Let no dopey delude you. We're free to, to, to make a decision to honor God, to obey God, to live in righteousness, holiness, and truth, to live in modesty, to live in humility, to live in, 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 in the will and purpose of God, obedient to the scriptures, not to live according to society and say, oh, it's okay, God's grace will keep me in my wickedness, in my sin, in my immorality, in my way of the world. Because if the world loves us, if the world embraces us, the Bible says we are in the world, but not of the world. Our behavior is what determines whether we're of the world or just in the world. Come on. 
Amen. And so he's saying here, verse 9, let me just read it for you. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. So once we are born again, the lifestyle, the culture, the nature, the character of the old man has to be left back. Christians talking about, oh, I'm going to the club. It doesn't matter. God will not condemn me. I'm going and I'm going to have a glass of vodka and orange juice or a glass of wine or a glass of this or a glass of that. And I'm going to dance with my friends and enjoy the good, clean music. I'm not going to dance when the, when the bad music come on, but I'm going to enjoy myself. And then I'm going to church the next morning. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to go to hell for that experience. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, though, that you are on a road. That behavior, that lifestyle, that attitude, that mindset is not on the narrow road. That's a broad road mindset. And many with the mindset of Christianity, but are on the wide road of sinful manifestations, shall be sincerely cast into hell because they have a sincere thought that they are saved but they shall sincerely face the fire of hell and so it's important guys that we take note do not let culture contaminate our Christian values please do not let culture contaminate our Christian values because no one who is born of God continues to sin hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> hey pastor Marsha not believing herself this morning you know guys i'm telling you <laughs> hallelujah but it is it is well she just challenged me on something that is is, is um that we we often think is cute i remember when i was a young christian um, I, I used to attend a particular church and uh, a lot of the persons from that church were um, socially and economically of a, a particular upper echelon and um, and and, and uh, what's it called jazz and blues mm -hmm. yeah the ear Jamaica jazz and blues um, that's how it started and I think someone else take it, take it over took it over but that's not the important thing the name but there was this awesome concert that ear supply and um, Regina Bell and all these um, supposedly awesome R&B artists um, used to yeah Jackie when you were when you were Jamaican Jackie you used to to go to that um, to that concert all of us used to go to that concert when i worked in media i used to get passes to go to cover it and to be a part of the situation and i enjoyed it immensely but understand understand this clearly guys as you transition the things you used to do to satisfy your soul the things you used to do the things we used to do to satisfy our soul why did we go to ear jamaica jazz and blues why do we go to reggae sunfest reggae sunsplash why do we go to a regina bell concert or a, a ear supply concert why do we go because it satisfies our our old mortal soul to enjoy what once used to hold us in control and God is saying, I have taken you out of that. And even the things that seems like it is good, seems like it didn't cause any harm. You don't understand the spiritual implications behind it. R. Kelly, and I don't want to pick on anyone or um, defame anyone. That's not what this is about. But when you think about R. Kelly, 99% of the things that we know about R. Kelly are, is, is, is how wonderful he sings, how amazing and gifted he is as a writer, how amazing and gifted he is as a performer, as, as, as all of these good things. That's what we know. And except for the court hearings, except for the things that have come out behind the scenes, we would not have known or understood the spirits, come on people of God, the spirits that were coming on these I believe I can fly. We would not have known. And so when we are embracing these things, maturity in God now tells us that what you listen to have become a part of you. What you have listened to have become a part of you. So you cannot separate the music, the word, the love songs from the person who sings it. That is why when someone is preaching, if they're preaching good word, but their life is in a 
bad state corrupt and disgusting we often say i'm leaving that church because that pastor's fruit is not good then how come we go to a concert where the person is singing good song but their life is not according to the will and purpose of jesus oops oh pastor rowan you just mm -mm, you just drop a bombshell yeah, uh, it's the same principle guys it, it is it is the same principle if you will not listen to a pastor preach who you know is a pedophile who you know is do he preaches a powerful word but he's an adulterer he preaches a powerful word but he's mixed with some satanic cults he preaches a powerful word lay hands on the sick and they recover but he is into beating his wife you are going to leave that church or complain or do a video on TikTok, instagram facebook and say pastor so and so needs to change he needs deliverance because 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 and I'm not going back to that church then how come how come you go to this amazing concert with someone who might be doing the same things or worse because they don't know Jesus any at all their filter is not the filter of the Holy Ghost but you go to these concerts there were Christians at the Chris Brown concert I'm still incensed by that Christians Oh, this can't do me anything that's what you think that's because you're immature and not knowledgeable and so there are things that we do people of God that represents a continued sinning but we think that it is okay because of God's grace amen we have to be careful we have to be wise the Bible says for lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge so we must become knowledgeable as to what we can and cannot do and so we must ask God God what do you mean when you say no one who is born of you will continue sinning what do you mean when I'm born of you do I have to give up everything of my own life of course a baby who is born to the world can't continue to live in water in the womb can't continue to get fed by the umbilical cord of mother come on can you imagine a mother walking with a baby still connected to the umbilical cord and she's carrying a bath pan in front of her and the baby is submerged in the bath pan of water because the baby is now born but still wants to live like how it used to live in the womb. That makes no sense. And it's the same thing we're trying to do. We're trying to come be born again in God, but we still want to be connected to the umbilical cord of, of Regina Bell, of, of, of R. Kelly, of, 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 of Jay-Z and Beyonce and all these people. We still want to be connected to that umbilical cord. But I'm here to tell you today, as believers in Christ, as Fourth Watch family members, you got to hear truth. And the truth must make your reality a reality of God, not a reality of the world. Amen? So we have to sever ties, cut off man, and seek God for a new way forward. Because he has it. Hallelujah. See, you guys inspire me to go back to verse 9. And now the whole time finish, I'm still in verse 9. <laughs> it's hard to go forward. There's so many revelations in these verses of scripture. It's like new things just pop out of it. So it's it making me nervous to even reference a, a top verse anymore because it just keeps flowing. But remember, it's important for us to note, guys, if God has taken us out of that life, it means that we have agreed with him that the life that we used to live is not a good life. His life is the life that we must now embrace. So you cannot stand in his life and in the old life at the same time. That's playing booty, as we used, as we say in Jamaica. You're playing on the good side and playing on the bad side at the same time. That is not acceptable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so for those, come on, for those who have gone and who believe that going to these concerts and going to these bars and, and doing these things, hallelujah, is, is okay. It is not okay and we need to renounce it and step away from that sinful life. I'm here to tell you that there is no greater fun, no greater excitement. If we still only want to embrace the things that satisfies our soul, then our spirit has not yet taken control. And we must yield to our spirit, not our soul. Amen? So I want to just ask each and every one of us, no condemnation, to just renounce, repent and renounce 
our desire for the things of the world repent and renounce things that we don't know is sin but because it is still connected to the world and connected to the sin of the world and we embrace it bring it into our home bring it into our marriage do you know that there are some Christians and I'm not going to um, separate and put categories on Christians but Christians who uh, cannot be intimate as married couple without a worldly song there are Christians who play worldly songs I don't uh, I don't I don't see nothing wrong yeah that you know that song right that's the only part I'm gonna say amen and they play these songs and they think it's okay because the atmosphere is 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 is, is an atmosphere of marriage no I see something wrong with you bringing something that is not of God into the atmosphere that is, is, is sanctified by God. What about getting married to love songs? I am marching down to love songs. Whew. Time. Yes, our time is gone. Pastor Marsha asked, what about getting married and walking to, to, um, to love songs? Guys, understand, if the principle of who sing the song and what the song says has implications and indications of something that could contaminate the beginning of something that God is doing then maybe we should stay away from it maybe we should do more research on who the singer is what kind of lifestyle they're living before we even choose to use their songs because Satan was the author of music he was the one the one in charge of music and that's why he uses music so effectively so we need to find out some more things. Just be more diligent. Because the reason, let me just say this and then I close. The reason why we often use these, um, what you call them, love ballads to, to, to march to when we're getting married is because that's what we still know from our old life. That's what our soul craves. That's what we think makes the difference or sets the tone for our life i'm here to tell you that once you are born again the tone is set by jesus the tone is set by the holy ghost and i'm telling you that if you don't play a love song sung by a sinner at your wedding your wedding will still start complete end and you'll go on your honeymoon and nobody will remember that you didn't play r kelly or Regina Bell or Beyonce at your wedding nobody will remember but if you do play them and a spirit is imparted to the people there and upon your marriage you'll remember that and experience that for a long time until you and the people at your wedding have been delivered from that spirit so is it worth it I don't think so because nobody will remember the next day nobody will say wow did you hear that song what an awesome song their marriage is gonna be blessed because of that song that the bride walked into oh my goodness wow what a song nobody remembers and so we must learn and mature and grow to recognize that there are some things that we do in a moment that has more negative impact, long lasting negative impact than the impact that it has in the moment that we use it or do it or say it. Let's not cause damage for a long time for just a moment of satisfaction. A man and a woman get together for a moment and for half an hour or an hour or two hours or even for a day, they have a grand time and they have cursed themselves and transferred demon and impacted their anointing and call and purpose for years. Do you really think a day or an hour is worth years of distress in your life? It never is. People will remember how you fell from grace, how your anointing was cut, how your ministry was destroyed, but they will almost never remember the sacrifice you made to preserve what God has given you. No one will remember that you resisted 
that you chose not to play those songs, that you chose not to go with that girl or with that man. No one will remember that. But you and God will remember the sacrifice you made for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's do what is right, man, because we who are born of God shall not continue to sin or let the devil manifest within. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Grab your communion. Get your communion. It's communion time. Hallelujah. Truth impacts atmosphere. Truth impacts what is our existence and make it our reality. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. That's a nice title for this morning's devotion. The truth of our reality. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for today, tonight, whatever time zone that your people are in. Thank you that you have ministered to us in a way that is supernatural. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you're propelling us into this weekend with great boldness, with great anointing, and with great power. And so we thank you, we bless you and honor you. We ask that you will sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies blessings and favor, health and strength, prosperity and good success. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm going to ask you a special favor. Anyone who if you're if you're married now you're you're um you're even if you you're you're no longer married you was married and you're divorced or as a christian you've gone recently to any of these concerts especially the chris brown concert i want you to just trust me trust the god in me and just in your own quiet personal time after devotion is finished just sincerely say to god father where i have true ignorance or even knowingly allowed uh, satanic influence and demonic things to enter my space i repent and ask for a cleansing and a purifying of my life my atmosphere my marriage uh, and anything that would have been contaminated by my choices i repent oh god and ask your forgiveness and your cleansing and purifying in jesus name amen simple not even a minute but it can change a lot about where you are and what you are doing going forward amen praise god and if you're getting married soon try your best unless you have researched and know that this person has repented and is now a christian or whatever um stay away from from the the, the music just that seems to suit the soul amen we are a new creation we have new standards we live by the truth no longer a truth amen hallelujah raise your hands for the blessing and now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of jesus christ go forth family and have an amazing day and weekend god's way for our god has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in jesus name remember jesus loves you and we love the whole owner too god bless you on behalf of pastor marsha wade i'm rowan wade saying have a fantastic day and an amazing weekend god's way amen god bless you god bless you guys remember to do something good for someone today and over this weekend go out of your way make a concerted effort to be a blessing 
wherever you go and in whatever you do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I declare a blessing on you remember those of you who are in New York and the close environs to um, Jamaica Avenue please get ready to go to the conference on Saturday hallelujah tomorrow the mighty women of God are gonna be there teaching and imparting the anointing of God upon women to become kingmakers men to learn uh, yes and men are invited because men are kingmakers as well you know but yes let me just explain the term kingmakers kingmakers the bible says we are kings and when he says we are kings he did not state that we are only 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 males are kings he says we are kings and we and are priests. priests yeah and so we we are to make others lives better mm. and that's why we are believers so we are believers to make others life better and so as we learn the word every morning and as we go to these conferences we are learning to become better so that we can make others better and so we are actually robing persons and crowning them instead of derobing them so when it's when the term kingmakers mean making others kings making mm. others lives better and we have to be better in order to make others life better and so that's just the gist of what kingmakers mean we crown people we don't destroy lives we crown people amen hallelujah well i'm 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 sad in one instance sister jackie and i'm happy in another i'm glad that you're working because you have to make that money but I'm sad that you're working so that you can't get to go to the conference. But just speak it, pray, pray over it, declare it. Um, since you are in that environment and you have authority over that environment, just prophesy that the, con the, the um, conference is going to be awesome, wonderful. Kingmakers are going to arise in great power and anointing from that conference tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So sometimes we can't participate physically in a situation, but it doesn't mean we can't participate spiritually. Amen. Bless you. Love you guys. Stay safe over the weekend. May angels go before you to make crooked places straight and rough roads smooth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Love you guys. See you on Monday, same time, same place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.